And I want to talk about the um, permaculture design course and uh, the diploma system. Um, and I first I want to say something that I learned in the past is I'm throwing out the blanket. I'm I'm saying um, that I'm I don't intend to uh, offend anyone. I'm only trying to make a comment on this. Um, I'm really happy and I'm glad for all of the people in permaculture right now that are out there um, teaching and doing and, and uh, promoting permaculture. But what I'm a little bit afraid of is I, it's become a thing where this piece of paper permaculture design certificate. It's become this thing that now we have to have. You know, uh, if we don't have our permaculture design certificate, then the whole idea for me behind permaculture is we're trying to get out of the box. Our society, mother culture, what everybody thinks. So we have this box and we're trying to break out of it. We have peak oil and we have global warming and we have economic crisis and we have all of these things coming together all at once. And for me, permaculture is kind of a doorway and a way of life into a new world, a new way of living, living with community, living with the earth, living uh, with each other so that we can grow our own food, but I, I'm afraid what I, what I see is that people are taking permaculture and they're making a money-making operation out of it. I've seen permaculture design courses anywhere from um, four or five hundred dollars up to twelve, fifteen hundred dollars and the permaculture certificate. Um, in uh, England you can get it for about eight hundred dollars but if you go to Gaia University and again I don't wanna throw out these names and think that I'm bad-mouthing these people but it's three thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars for a permaculture design diploma so with this diploma, now they're going to say, oh, you can't even teach permaculture. You can design, but you can't teach. So I'm just afraid of what's happening. Um, and I don't know what Bill Mollison had in mind with all this, but he says in some of his videos that I want to keep permaculture out of the universities. I want it to be freely available. And maybe I take the word freely a little bit too literally, um, but I am giving away my knowledge. I don't have a permaculture design certificate, but I spend months every winter reading and learning about it. But I don't leave it there, and I don't say, there's my paper. See, I'm better than somebody else. See, I know I'm going to have people that are get mad about this, but... I'm trying to just put out my opinion, but we're making, we're going back into the box. Mother culture, having that piece of paper, having, yes, I have my permaculture design certificate and I have my diploma. I just, am, I'm afraid of what I'm seeing out there that permaculture is going to become this money-making thing and I want to see it more organic. So I like, uh, I found a man on the internet and I think he thinks the same way. His permaculture courses, it's in England, his courses are quite inexpensive. He also travels around the world. His courses are quite uh, inexpensive but a 
project that he's working on is called the Free Permaculture Design um, Certification. Uh, I'm going to look up the link again for y'all and I can put it down there, but he's working on getting, he's filmed 150 hours of, of his permaculture courses and he's in the process of editing it down to, um, to make an online course. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get certificates from that, but does it really matter? <laughs> do we have the knowledge or do we have the piece of paper? Uh, I'm working on getting a grant. I live in Sweden and unfortunately here in Sweden without the piece of paper, um, they don't really look at the experience. And that's the way it is. Uh, it's a public policy. hundred years ago and more in Sweden, it was um, people in the city, there were educated people in the city, but in the countryside, most people were farmers and their education was at a lower level than in um, what it could be in some of the cities. So Sweden said, we want to educate. And then they actually say, we want to over-educate. <laughs> so um, it comes to a point now that if you don't have that piece of paper, um, Sweden uh, doesn't really recognize the experience. Another bit of social commentary. Um, again, I'm throwing out the blanket. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But I, I'm working on getting an EU grant. I've already filled out the paperwork. They've accepted the paperwork. So now it's a wait and see. Um, so um, I think there will be things that I will learn in the class. I'll meet other people. I'll network. So I think there's good things that come from these courses. I know that teachers and people, we need to eat. We need to make money. I'm not against that, but I'm just against um, um, it's becoming inflexible. And I think the whole thing about permaculture is its design flexibility. If I'm in the desert, I'm going to dig my plants down lower into the ground so that water will run off down into them. Here in Sweden and other places, you're going to want to make raised beds because here in Sweden, for example, those raised beds will, uh, the, that ground will defrost, it will unfreeze sooner than the rest of the earth and it will become warmer um, during the summer. And you can design those gardens um, where they're across the wind I'll make a hill this way so when my wind blows across that it's not blowing the heat out from down in those little valleys and I get the heat staying into my into my garden area so we have this design flexibility depending on the area depending on the zone depending on all of these features we can design our system when I met this Lakota man and uh, I became his mentoree, <laughs> he became my mentor, uh, one of the first thing he says is, I don't have a syllabus, I don't have a piece of paper of how I'm going to teach you because each person is an individual, each person is different, each person is, has their own life experiences and some people in permaculture, for example, who come into permaculture have come from a city, for example, and they have no experience with nature, for example. There are people that come from the city that do have experience with nature, and there could be people that come from the countryside that have no experience from nature. So, do you see, we're all this mix, and each person is different, and I would like permaculture diplomas and permaculture um, certification to take that into account. 
how are the individual, what do they know already? Are we just going to charge them the money just so that, I don't know, I want to throw this out, I, I would like to see a little bit of a discussion um, on, on this subject. Winter time in the teepee is uh, something that I feel that we're all going to have more and more of. Um, if you look at why people go into permaculture, we see something out on the horizon. We don't know how far away it is. David um, Holmgren, he sees things going down in like a series of, of crashes, for example. A, we'll have a crisis. Society will slip a few notches. I'm, visualizing the back side of the peak oil curve as we're coming over the back side of that curve we're gonna have these little crises who knows what's gonna happen to the airlines if we get hundred and fifty dollar oil again um, is it gonna become that we can't fly only the military maybe the military will have to quit as well that would be good wouldn't it but as we go over the back side of this curve things are gonna start to happen and people are going to want to come into permaculture and people are going to need to need to start to grow their own food so we need, really need to co concentrate on the skills and not the paper um, so that's it for today and I want to thank you for um, watching my videos I've been having lots of new subscribers and I want to welcome my new subscribers and of course I want to thank all of my subscribers um, from the past and thank you for watching.